On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, spy pictures of what is undoubtedly the new Model Y pop up online and reveal a slick new bit of styling. Plus, one California city switched its entire police fleet over to Tesla's. Elon Musk gives an update on when Cybertruck owners might finally get FSD and more. What's happening, friends? Welcome to Ride the Lightning. It's your weekly Tesla unofficial podcast. This one for August 4th, 2024. It's episode 470. I'm Ryan McCaffrey to my left, Daisy the Boxer. And this week, as always, there is so much fun stuff to talk about. One of those fun things is last weekend's X takeover in San Luis Obispo, including the Ride the Lightning listener meetup. So I'll tell you all about that towards the end of the show. There is so much other current news to get to that I want to start there. But first, I do want to take a quick moment just to acknowledge a couple of really fun Tesla anniversaries in my life. First, today, as I record this, Friday, August 2nd, this is the nine-year anniversary of the first episode of this podcast. Nine years ago, today, as I'm recording, I released episode one, which I would have to imagine is probably pretty terrible now if I were to go back and listen to it. At least, honestly, I hope it would seem bad now if I went back and listened to it. Because if I haven't gotten better after doing this thing for nine years every single Sunday, I think that's a pretty terrible look for me. But nine years ago... So anyway, I want to say a huge thanks to all of you who take the time out of your week to listen to this podcast whether you've listened the entire nine years or if this is your first episode or more likely somewhere in between. And then the other fun Tesla anniversary in my life this week is that last Monday, July 29th, marked six years since I finally went from being a Tesla fan on the outside looking in to being a Tesla owner. Six years since I took delivery of my 2018 Model 3 Performance, one of the very first Model 3 Performance made, and boy, has it been a great ride, literally and figuratively. I'm so incredibly grateful to get to own this car. It, it really is a privilege that I try my best not to take for granted. In fact, when I was walking Daisy today, before I sat down to record this, I was thinking about how the, my car is inarguably better six years in than it was when I took delivery. I mean, the the only thing that's worse about it is the range, just because of the normal battery degradation curve. It doesn't have the range it did when I took delivery six years ago, but everything else is better. I'm lucky that through the help of Immaculate Reflections, it looks as good or better than ever. I've done the Chrome Delete. I've got the Zero-G wheels on there. I love the look of the car. I think it looks better than it did six years ago. And in terms of what the car can do, it's that's the inarguable part. Because they've Tesla has upgraded my performance twice. They pushed two separate over-the-air software updates within the first year, maybe year and a half of, of when I had it. Because the car was... 3.5 seconds when I bought it without rollout, then 3.3, then 3.1 is, or excuse me, that's with rollout, but that's, that is pretty darn impressive that they've actually increased the performance of my Model 3 performance twice. And then software wise, that's, it's unquestionably better. There have been so many great features added in the six years I've owned it. I've talked about my favorites. I did a whole lightning round mini episode on Patreon about this, but some of my favorites, sentry mode, far and away, my favorite thing that's been added since I took delivery. They've added a ton of video games since I took delivery. They've added the uh, side repeater camera when you put your turn signal on to let you make safer lane changes. That's more recent. So many things, and my car is better six years in 
than it ever was without me having to spend a dime, by the way. Everything I just told you about, except the Chrome Delete, I did pay for the Chrome Delete, but everything else, even the Zero-G wheels, I was lucky enough to win in the referral program. But then all that software stuff, of course, is free. So awesome ride. Here's to many more with this Model 3. All right, quick appetizer to get us going this week, and it is the headline topic, so I guess it's not really an appetizer. It's a meal, although we were only given a couple little nibbles here. We didn't get to see the entire car, but apparent spy shots of the refreshed Model Y, a.k.a. Project Juniper, were posted to the Tesla Motors subreddit this past week. We got exactly two pictures. They were posted by Reddit user Abomb1997, who is either presumably a Tesla employee or someone closely connected to a Tesla employee, since one of the photos was taken from inside the car and the other one was taken of the back of the car with its cover lifted off. So whoever the Tesla employee is, whether it's that Reddit user themselves or someone that that Reddit user knows, Unfortunately, they're probably fired now. They have most likely been tracked down and terminated because this is a significant leak. Obviously, Tesla does not want this thing to be seen or shown before they're ready to show it. But we saw it or saw part of it. And really, there's one main thing on the exterior that we're able to see because the exterior shot uh, is of the back of the car on standing on the passenger side, looking towards the middle of the car, and it really only shows one thing in this picture, and that is a light bar running across the back of the car with the T-E-S-L-A lettering across it, which is what the 3 Fresh, the Model 3 Highland, the new, the new Model 3, also has. It's got the lettering, but not the light bar. So we actually can't see either taillight in this picture, to see if it's the same tail light that the 3 Fresh has. But at the very least, this if you believe this is real, and I absolutely believe this is real, there's, there's a very low chance that someone went to an incredible amount of trouble to fake the back end of a new Model, uh, new model Y. So this, at the very least, all but confirms that Juniper is not going to look exactly like the Highland, in the way that the original Model Y looks exactly like the original Model 3, just with a hatchback and stretched a little taller. The second picture is of the interior of the car, taken from the front passenger seat, and the camera's pointed towards the passenger side A-pillar, meaning we can see a little bit of the dashboard as well as most of the passenger door panel. Now, the dashboard, if you're curious, does look identical to the new Model 3's dashboard. Wouldn't be a surprise there if they're keeping that consistent across the cars. But, to my surprise, the door panel looks to be a bit different than the 3 Fresh's door panel. Not drastically so, but it's a little bit different. It's just got a little bit of a different styling touch to it. Now, I, for one would be very happy if the new Model Y was a bit more of its own vehicle rather than just a taller hatchback version of the new Model 3. And we've probably got around five to six months to go until it's formally unveiled. At least that's my guess anyway, but this is a pretty notable leak and it does give us one specific new bit of styling on this car, and I think one that a lot of people are going to welcome. I think, you know, I mean, I know light bars are kind of in fashion now. The Cybertruck's got one, a number of other cars, the Rivians have them, but I think it's going to be nice on the new Model Y, and it'll be nice to have it differentiate, really clearly differentiated, at least from the back, from the new Model 3. Next up this week, Remember CEO Elon Musk's update from the shareholder meeting back in June about the Cybertruck Foundation Series production ending here in Q3? Well, anecdotally, it does appear to be on track for that exact thing to happen. I have received notes from two listeners. One, 
who made his Cybertruck reservation in September of 2023. So just two months before the Foundation Series Cybertruck launched. And then another listener who made his reservation right after the Cybertruck launched. Both this past week received their invitation to configure a Foundation Series Cybertruck. And then since I've received those notes, I've seen a number of other people posting online that have very recent reservations, meaning since the truck launched back in the end of November of 2023, that have received a Foundation Series invite. So it's been eight months, and it now seemingly is all pointing to Foundation Series ending pretty darn soon. I feel like Canada might be the last gasp of the Foundation Series, because Canada recently got a key regulatory approval on Cybertruck that should pave the way for the truck to be released there. Now, given Canada's relatively low population, my expectation, plus given where the fact that the Cybertruck's production ramp is ramping up, my expectation is that all of Canada's reservations will be sent at a Foundation Series invite at the same time. Sometime probably this month, I hope, because there, I know there are a lot of Canadian reservation holders out there, and some of them do want to purchase the Foundation Series. And if that happens, that should mean that general production would be likely to start either late this month, possibly late August, but most likely, I think it's it's looking like sometime in September. Now, will any general production deliveries happen before the end of this quarter, meaning September 30th? Maybe, maybe not. Most likely, the first deliveries of general production will happen in early Q4, a.k.a. October. And if that does happen, if Tesla does at least begin production of the general production trucks, even if they don't deliver any of them by the end of September, it's going to give them a nice talking point for their next quarterly earnings call and shareholder letter, which will happen in, what, the third week of October if history holds. So, in fact, by the time the third week of October, the actual earnings call rolls around, they may very well, there's a good chance they may have delivered the first production, general production Cybertrucks. So that'll be something that they will absolutely tout on the earnings call uh, because shareholders will want to hear that and they'll, they'll be happy to hear that. So we are almost there, my friends. Those of you like me waiting for the general production Cybertruck, we are so, so close now. All right, before I continue with a whole lot more Tesla news on this week's podcast, I want to mention that I hope all of you who are very kindly and generously giving back to this podcast, supporting the podcast on Patreon at that $10 per month tier or higher, I hope all of you enjoyed this week's lightning round mini episode. A reminder, I do those Short lightning round mini episodes, 10 to 15 minutes usually, although this one was about 30. This was one of, one of the longer ones. This week's lightning round was about re-ranking every Tesla paint color ever now that there have been four new paint colors since I originally did a lightning round about this quite a while ago. It was one of the earlier lightning rounds that I did. We're up to 105 or 106 now. But it's been a while since I did it, so I thought now we've got four new colors, and I finally got to see the newest of them, Lunar Silver and Quicksilver. I got to see them really get a good look at the X Takeover event last weekend. So this week's lightning round is re-ranking every Tesla paint color ever. There have been 19 of them now, which, you know, I guess maybe other manufacturers would have more, but... 19 overall for Tesla, excluding the original Roadster, because that was a Lotus deal. Lo Lotus painted all of those cars. Anyway, check that out. And if that sounds interesting to you, you'd like to hear that and all 105 other lightning rounds, I would love for you to join the Patreon, support the podcast. Hopefully at some point, and maybe this is the week, you feel like I've earned your support because I know that the support has to be earned. You're not just going to 
listen once and go, sure, I'll sign up. I mean, if you do, great, but I don't reasonably expect that. I have to earn your support by delivering you a hopefully really good podcast week after week after week, and I do my best to do that. So if you'd like to join the Patreon, be it at that most popular $10 per month tier or one of the other tiers, you can go to my Patreon page found at patreon.com slash Podcast. Don't forget there's a 10% discount if you want to do the annual pledge, meaning that you just pledge once for an entire year of support, you'll get a 10% discount. There's also a seven-day free trial, so you can sign up without actually committing any money just to see what being a, a backer of the Patreon is like. All that, again, at patreon.com slash Podcast. Okay, next up this week, South Pasadena, California. Their police department has been hailing the benefits of Teslas as police vehicles. They made a whole video about it. In fact, let's hear from South Pasadena PD Sergeant Tony Abdallah about how it's gone. They replaced their entire fleet. That's the, the preface to this. Their entire fleet of police vehicles is now Tesla's. So here's Sergeant Abdallah to talk about how it's going. My name is Tony Abdallah. I'm a sergeant with the South Pasadena Police Department. I currently run our detective bureau. And in my second life, I am the EV project lead for our transition project for South Pass PD. We have an existing fleet that was probably end of life about three to four years ago. So we were looking for a solution to replace our entire fleet all at once. What we found was Tesla was not only a viable option, but it was the best option. The city is very environmentally and sustainability conscious. We got a much better performing car that costs significantly less to maintain and fuel. And also the benefits of the zero emission aspect as well. We found it to be a very durable car. Our admin fleet in the first year had absolutely no maintenance associated with it. Probably the biggest cost savings variable, cost of energy is way less than what we're paying in California for a gallon of gas. I think initially there was some concerns from the community. Why are we paying so much for cars? But when you examine the total cost of ownership over a 10 year period, actually becomes a significant cost savings. So when you look at the entire package, it became not only a viable solution, it became the best solution as well. Officer safety was at the top of the list. And what we found was Tesla makes the safest cars made with the most advanced technology. We had a pursuit on the freeway in the rain. The officers said that they never would have continued with that pursuit in the cars that we were operating versus the Tessas because they felt very, very safe in there. With the low center gravity of the car related to how it handles and how it brakes, they felt comfortable continuing at those speeds. I, I didn't want to have to ever at some point in time, God forbid, have to go to an officer's family and tell them that we sacrificed and went with a car that was less safe than something else that was out there. It made me really happy that I was able to put our officers in the safest cars made, period. One of the biggest misconceptions, how long does it take to charge? Now, aren't you going to run out of charge during a pursuit? The range on the Model Y is almost identical to the cars that were previously in service. We're able to get about another 200 miles of range in 15 minutes. This is essentially an officer's office, and they work out of this for a very long period of time. We didn't have a whole lot of officers that had exposures to EV, so to have experts in the functionality of Tesla was really important to provide that on-site training to the officers and to get them comfortable really speaks to the partnership and expertise that Unplugged has with law enforcement. Being the first agency to convert our fleet all at once, it's exciting in the sense that there's this huge opportunity that we believe will transcend other agencies across the world. And being able to work collectively and make this project and this mission better will just benefit law enforcement across the world significantly in the coming years. And that is very rewarding. I think it's so cool that they did their entire fleet at once. They just jumped into the deep end of the pool, ripped the band-aid off, whatever metaphor you want to use. And as I say, every time a police department puts a Tesla into its fleet, it's only a matter of time before word gets around 
at how well these cars do at this job. And that gets other departments in other cities and townships to make the switch as well. Ben Schaffer, the founder and the president of Unplugged Performance, who's been on this podcast before, they're the Tesla mod shop that made these police cars through their UpFit, UP Unplugged Performance, UpFit program. He was at the, the X Takeover event last weekend, and he, he, ho- he was on a panel, not one of the ones I hosted, but I, so I was listening to his presentation from the crowd, and he talked a lot about these, these police vehicles and their, the program that they've, this UpFit program. He talked about how he is betting the company, to use his words, which is, of course, borrowing an Elon phrase. He is betting his company on the UpFit program. He believes strongly that police departments around the country and around the world are going to do, they're going to want to do what South Pasadena has done. And quite honestly, I have no reason to doubt him on that because the numbers simply don't lie. It's a lot like the Tesla Semi in that regard, even though it's a completely different vehicle, completely different use case. But the customers of these upfit Tesla police cars, they don't care about styling or to an extent performance. I mean, I guess a police car does need to be able to go if it gets into a pursuit, but and a Tesla, a long range Model Y can certainly go. But the police departments care about the bottom line financially. And the Teslas, we all know from owning them, they simply win out in that regard over gas-powered police cars. And it's just very cool to hear about this. And I wanted to share this video, or at least the audio of the video, with you. Now, if you'd like to watch that video, it's on the X account South Pass PD, P-A-S, South P-A-S PD, or on the Unplugged Performance YouTube page. Next up this week, I've got good news and bad news for Cybertruck owners, both present and future. I will start with the bad news. It's specific for those of you, again, current or future Cybertruck owners, who would be interested in renting the range extender for road trips, which was something that came up a lot Back at the Cybertruck launch, when I was giving my thoughts on it, a lot of you called in, and a number of you. I mean, it's this was this was not a uh, an uncommon thought. A lot of people thought, "Boy, I'd love to rent one of those for a road trip, and then just return it to the service center and pay the daily the daily rate to rent it, whatever it is." Well, the bad news here is the range extender won't be removable. So, listener Jay Nigren, Jay, I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. Jay asked Cybertruck lead engineer Wes Morrill on X the question that many of us have wondered. Qu- uh, question was, quote, will the Cybertruck range extender be, quote, easily removable or could it be offered as a rental option from local service centers? And Wes, to his credit, responded to Jay Unfortunately, not with the answer that we were looking for, and Wes said, quote, No, any range extender offered by Tesla will be structurally mounted so it's safe in a crash, end quote. Well, when the range extender was first announced back at the Cybertruck launch at the end of November last year, again, a lot of you called in, rode in, hoping you'd be able to rent one from a service center for road trips, And I'd probably consider the same, depending on the pricing. So it's a shame that that's now off the table. But at least now we know before most of us have purchased the range extender. Now, I will say, when those of you that have bought the Foundation Series, you had the option to prepay a deposit. I think it was 500 or might have been 1,000. It was not an insignificant deposit for a range extender to get one of the first ones. And I wonder if this changes the equation for any of you who may have gone ahead and put that deposit down thinking that maybe it could be removable. So if if that's you, I would suggest talking to your nearest Tesla store. Hopefully if you've got one near you, maybe go speak to a service manager there. And if that, again, changes things for you, see if you can get your deposit back because If memory serves, I believe the design studio says that that deposit is non-refundable. But 
Anyway, for $16,000, just as a reminder, the range extender will be a permanent boost up to 470 miles of range if you've got the dual motor Cybertruck on the core wheels and the all-season tires, or 440 miles of range for a Cyber Beast with the core wheels and the all-season tires. Of course, every Cybertruck out there right now has the Cyber wheel covers and the all-terrain tires, which has slightly lower range, so we don't have the exact figures for what the range extender will give you if you're on that tire and wheel setup, but you figure between 450 and 460, most likely for dual motor, probably between 420 and 430 on Cyber Beast. Uh, I will say, personally, I am still tempted by the range extender, but the price is almost certainly going to be what stops me. I mean, $16,000, just to be honest with you, is, is just most likely not going to be possible for me while also making payments on the truck. But if I did save up for it and do it after the truck's been paid off, and that's an if, because who knows what five, you know, it's going to take me five years to pay it off, five year loan. Things could totally change, but it would almost make it like a new truck where you get that thing installed and suddenly, boom, you've got 400 and, you know, upwards of 470 miles of range. That would be pretty sweet. But who knows what will happen in the world of Tesla between now and then. Uh, the other thing I'm curious about with this, with the range extender, and as soon as Tesla starts delivering the range extenders, somebody will measure and will find out. And that is what the impact that this, what is going to be substantial extra amount of weight from the range extender, what impact that that extra weight's going to have on the Cybertruck's performance, the zero to 60 performance. So when will all that happen? Well, you may recall that at the Cybertruck launch last November, Tesla said that the range extender would ship in late 2024. Well, we're still technically in mid-2024. We haven't quite transitioned over to late 2024 yet. However, we have not had any updates on the range extender since launch. So for now, all we can do is sit back and see if the late 2024 estimate is going to hold. Okay, I said there was bad news and good news for Cybertruck owners, both present and future. Here's the good news, and this is more specifically going to be good news to the current Cybertruck owners, the Foundation Series Cybertruck owners. We've got an update on the ETA for FSD to arrive on your stainless steel triangle. Here is a clip from Elon speaking virtually at the X Takeover event last weekend. Yes, Elon dialed in and spoke to the crowd. So here's a clip specifically about Cybertruck and FSD. Uh, well, it, I think that should be uh, coming out uh, in, in August. So uh, 12.5 is... Wait, two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's at some point, at some point in the next two to four-ish weeks, I... Um, the, 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 oh, it no. should work. I, would try. I, I mean, I'm sure. I'm not sure the exact timing because we just have to test it and make sure it works well. Um, so, but 12.5 is where a lot of things come together. Where uh, you've got the uh, uh, the high. You know, we, we upgrade the high highway stack to be the latest version. So it's it's uh, it's it's you don't have the old highway stack and the new city stack yet. You know, so. Um, ha having one sort of uh, integrated state-of-the-art stack for highway and city is a big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, like little things like and it, you can wear sunglasses and still <laughs> do the hands-off driving. Um, and, uh, and and then having it work on Cybertruck. Uh, yeah, I mean, a friend of mine <laughs> drove a Cybertruck all the way halfway across the country, and he said it was driving him great. It was Driving him crazy that he, he could not turn on FSD because it was. <laughs> if August happens, if the Cybertruck gets FSD this month, it would still be in time for general production, as discussed at the top of the podcast about where things seem to be at. I do continue to feel bad for the Foundation Series Cybertruck buyers out there who've been without not only the FSD that they've already paid for the entire time they've owned their truck so far 
But, as you know, they also haven't even had basic autopilot that entire time either. Thus, it is a relief to hear that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, I do realize that this is the second date Elon has given. He originally said end of June. That didn't happen. And now we're looking at August. But it is clearly narrowing in. And hopefully it is going to happen this month. Well, I wanted to hear how interested all of you who either own or plan to own a Cybertruck are in FSD. So I made it the subject of this week's Patreon poll. The question asked you simply, will you get FSD on your Cybertruck? And while 49% of you said, I'm not planning to get a Cybertruck. So let's look at the other half of the folks that voted that do plan to. Of those... 19% of you, so 19% of the remaining 50%, said, yes, I'll buy FSD outright on my Cybertruck for $8,000. 14% of that remaining 50% said, yes, I'll buy FSD outright on my Cybertruck, but only if Tesla honors the $7,000 price on my early reservation. 8% Of the remaining 50% said, I might subscribe for a month here or there for road trips or other occasions. And then it was pretty, it was all single digits from there on out. Um, In fact, just 2% said, I might buy FSD outright or subscribe if Tesla lowers the price of FSD. 5% said, no, I won't pay for it. I'm good with basic autopilot. And just 3% said, yes, I'll subscribe to FSD on my Cybertruck on a per-month basis. Thank you to everybody who voted. I realized almost as soon as I made the poll, but once I publish it, I can't. I can edit the post but not add more poll choices. I should have had a poll option for, I, I will purchase, or I, I'm waiting for Tesla to allow FSD transfer to Cybertruck because a couple people, including Rollin Frackleton, had posted about that. Thank you, Rollin. I definitely should have made that an option. And then I didn't mean to leave out those of you who've already purchased a Foundation Series Cybertruck. I should have made, I already have a Foundation Series Cybertruck that has FSD. Should have made that an option as well. But there you go. Interesting results. A number of you are planning to just go ahead and purchase it outright for 8000 Before I continue with the rest of this week's news, and yes, there is still plenty more to talk about, I want to mention the Tesla raffle once again. The clock is ticking on this. The the time is running out. If you would like to win a Tesla, and yes, that includes a Cybertruck, or you can opt to take $50,000 cash, but five vehicles, five Teslas to choose from, or the sixth choice being 50 grand, the 10th annual Tesla raffle from Chesed Chicago is back. I mentioned this last year, a lot of you entered. This year, I'm hoping one of you wins it. You've got the choice of five different Teslas, including the Cybertruck or the $50,000 cash. The proceeds here, whether you win or not, it's for a great cause. Chesed Chicago, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping families in crisis. They're funding over 80 programs and services right now with their goal of helping families get back on their feet by offering goods and services like food furniture, job placement, navigating government funding, and much more. For your chance to win, there is a discount here. Thank you to the Chesed Chicago folks for offering this discount to the Ride the Lightning audience. Go to ccraffle.com, where if you purchase two tickets, you can get $25 off of those two tickets using the promo code RTL. You've got to hurry. The tickets are limited. They're capped at $9,999, but also time's running out. The raffle is coming up very soon. So get your tickets today, ccraffle.com, where you can get $25 off of two tickets or with the same RTL promo code, $500 off of 15 tickets. So I hope one of you wins. Head on over to ccraffle.com, and if you buy two tickets or the block of 15, use that promo code RTL for the discount. And also this week, as Daisy the Boxer snores to my left, I don't know if that's coming through on the mic, the Accelerate Auto extended warranty option for your Tesla. I have it on my car. 
I have a three-year, 40,000-mile extended coverage plan. You, too, can do one on your car, and you can make it whatever you want. You could match the one and only one that Tesla offers, which is a two-year, 25,000-mile plan. Or you could do three years, four years, five years, 10 years. You can go up to 10 years, up to 125,000 miles. And that's, remember, after your factory warranty is up. So you can, you can keep your car covered for quite a long time and quite a long distance. The X-Care plan does everything the Tesla plan does and more and not just the, the duration of time or mileage. It not only matches Tesla by offering rental reimbursement and trip interruption coverage. Uh, oh, excuse me. Those are the two things <laughs> you'd think I'd have this memorized by now. Those are the two things that it does that the Tesla plan doesn't. It matches Tesla by having a $100 deductible and 24-7 roadside assistance. The rental reimbursement and the trip interruption coverage, that's unique to Xcare. Tesla does not offer that. So check them out. See which plan is right for you and get $100 off of your plan should you elect to purchase one by using the discount code LIGHTNING. The website to go to is accelerateauto.com slash Xcare, and it's spelled kind of funky, so I'll spell it out for you. X C E L. E-R-A-T-E-A-U-T-O dot com slash X-C-A-R-E. Don't forget that discount code lightning. And remember too, you can also get a battery and drivetrain coverage to cover the most expensive component of your car. You can get that by itself if that's all you want to cover, or you could add that on to a general protection policy and have the whole car front to back, top to bottom covered as well. Okay, with those PSAs out of the way, I move back to the rest of this week's news. Here's a fun one. Tesla has launched the karaoke mics here in the United States. Uh, oh, wait, did I skip? Oh, no. Well, all right, I'll do the karaoke story first. I'm, I'm skipping ahead in my notes. I'll just circle back. Uh, the karaoke mics had been already available in China. I think I mentioned them in the podcast here when they did first come out. They have arrived stateside, and I will read you the description from the online Tesla shop. It reads, Grab the mic, cue up your favorite songs, and take your karaoke game to the next level. The karaoke mic works with your favorite media apps on both the front and rear touchscreens in your car. Features anti-howling technology, so all your notes come through crisp and clear. Comes with two wireless microphones that automatically pair with your vehicle and have over 10 hours of continuous singing time per charge. Open karaoke or your preferred media app on your vehicle's touchscreen and turn your cabin into your own private karaoke lounge. So, you get... The two mics, as the description noted, two in the package, along with a receiver, a data cable, a charging cable, and a storage bag. So you've now heard all of that. Take a guess as to what you think this costs. I'll give you a moment. Did you guess $215? Because I sure didn't. These are fun, sure. I mean, admittedly, I'm not a big karaoke guy, but in my humble opinion... That is too rich for my blood, personally. Perhaps others feel the same way as I do about the pricing on these because they have not sold out yet. And the only reason I mention that they haven't sold out yet is because many of the fun Tesla lifestyle products that I'll usually mention on the podcast because they're fun and interesting, they often sell out like right away, right when they first hit the shop. These have not. They are still available. So check them out if you're interested. And a side note here, as a professional words guy, professional wordsmith, both by day and here at night on Ride the Lightning, I do have to give a tip of the cap to Tesla. I love the puntastic car Aoki name of these. Just A plus, 10 out of 10, no notes on the name of this. It's so funny. It's so good. Bravo to whomever at Tesla came up with karaoke. I love it. Okay, circling back in my notes, and it's back on the subject of Cybertruck. 
Speaking of version 12.5, which is what the Cybertrucks are waiting for to get FSD, the rollout of 12.5 is ongoing. Cybertruck hasn't received it yet as of the recording of this podcast, but 12.5 is being pushed out to the fleet. But it's starting with hardware four cars first. Hardware three cars, such as the one I own, are coming soon. Elon Musk took to X to answer questions about this, saying, quote, It takes considerable software effort to optimize the code enough to run on hardware three. It also needs to be validated separately. The estimated rollout is about 10 days, end quote. Now, if you're wondering, okay, when did he post that? He did so on July 29th, my six-year car anniversary, if you will, meaning that if that 10-day timeline holds, those of us with hardware three Teslas that have FSD can expect to start receiving version 12.5 on or around this Thursday, August 8th. But more importantly, in the bigger picture, does this mean that hardware three cars are nearing the end of the FSD updates that we're going to get? I mean, hardware three, the fleet, the size of the fleet for hardware three is huge because you're talking about every single quote unquote classic model three ever made all the old model threes 2017 through the end of 2023 because hardware four didn't go into the model three until the three fresh at the beginning of this year. It's a pretty easy, firm split changeover. It was all the old model threes are on hardware three. All the new ones are on hardware four. So that alone just the old Model 3 fleet that I'm a part of is over 1 million cars. It's also every Model Y made from early 2020, March of 2020, when the the Y debuted, until spring of 2023. So uh, basically exactly three years worth of Model Y there. Throw in a nice chunk of S's and X's as well. And well, hopefully I'm overreacting here, but... This the reason that I'm a little nervous that that this could we could be nearing the end of the line for hardware three cars is that I can remember or I should say I can't remember ever having to wait for an update for any reason with my hardware three car for any reason, let alone code optimization. It's always rolled out to hardware three cars first, even since hardware four has been out now. I know the march of technology is always going to move forward and that it is inevitable that hardware three is going to get cut off at some point. I guess I just wasn't expecting it quite so soon, which if I'm being honest with myself, probably a little bit ignorant slash silly of me, considering that hardware three is over five years old now. Hardware three rolled out in about March of 2019. It was right after the first autonomy day. And it was the, the March after I got my car in 2018. And I, you know, I'd bought the FSD package when it, when it went on sale there for a a hot minute at, at the end of February, 2019. And then when they, when the service center got the hardware three, the FSD computers in that entitled me to get an upgrade, which, which I got. So it's been five years for Hardware 3, which is a pretty long time in the world of tech, but we'll see what happens and we'll see just how long, hopefully it's not much longer than the 10 days that Elon mentioned for those of us with Hardware 3 cars to get 12.5. All right, one last story this week, and this one goes out specifically to my Washington State listeners. There is a new EV incentive for those of you up there in the Pacific Northwest, I want to say thank you to longtime listener and generous Patreon backer Jared Brown, who sent the email that he got from Tesla over to me. And that email says, starting August 1st, 2024, you can receive a rebate of $5,000 for a new Tesla vehicle purchase or up to $9,000 for a new Tesla vehicle lease. 
To qualify, you must register your vehicle in Washington State and meet the maximum household income requirements, which I looked up because it's not on the Tesla site, but from the Washington State website, it reads, Washington residents making 300% or below of the federal poverty level in household income equivalent to $93,600 a year for a family of four. And then back to the Tesla stuff, Tesla uh, verbiage here. Each household is eligible to claim up to three rebates. Tesla purchase or financing contract must be signed between August 1st of 2024 until June of 2025 or until the program's $45 million budget is exhausted, whichever comes first. Rebate amount differs by lease term. Terms and conditions apply. Tesla does not guarantee fund availability or your personal eligibility. So if you qualify, let's just put this into perspective for a second. If you qualify, that could take the Model 3 long range rear wheel drive, that new, very, very appealing variant, down to $30,000. After that, so it'd be 35 out the door with the federal credit, and then another five back from Washington State. If you want to look at the Model Y long range rear wheel drive, the newer variant there, that's again great value, great range, great price, makes that vehicle 32.5 for a long range rear wheel drive Model Y, 32.5. So just awesome. That's that's fantastic. So those of you in Washington State, be sure to mention this to anybody in your life who might be thinking about buying an EV, be it a Tesla or anything else. But again, I'll just, I would, if I were talking to a, a friend about this in Washington State, I would, I would lead with the Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. 30K for a 360 mile range Model 3, safest car on the road, Supercharging capability, software updates, basic autopilot, FSD capable, all this great stuff has good good acceleration. I mean, it's it's an incredible value that you're getting on that car, particularly in Washington State for those of you that meet the uh, the eligibility requirements for this one. All right, that's it for another super busy week of Tesla news. But stick with me, I've got a few of your Ride the Lightning Hotline phone calls teed up and ready to go right after this. Hi, this is Franz von Holzhausen, and you're listening to Ride the Lightning with Ryan McCaffrey, the Tesla unofficial podcast. Welcome to the Ride the Lightning Hotline. It's your chance to potentially be featured here on the podcast. All you got to do is call in with your Tesla-related question, comment, or discussion topic. So how do you do it? There are two easy ways. Either first, you can use your smartphone's built-in voice recording software, record your question. Please try to keep it to 90 seconds or less so that I can get to as many callers each week as possible. And then email that file to me at my podcast address, which is simply teslapodcast at gmail.com. Or you can take that same 90 second or less question and just call in toll free and leave a message on the Ride the Lightning hotline. That toll free number that you can call anytime you like is 1-888-989-8752. Again, that's 1-888-989-TSLA. And if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted like I do with them or put onto a keepsake. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. First up this week is a fellow Ryan. Here's Ryan from Nevada. Uh, good day, Ryan. Calling from Nevada. My name is Ryan also. And I was listening to your most recent podcast and Every episode, you do talk about some of the uh, top accessories, or not accessories, but maybe the, um, like you you mentioned, like budget budget safe solar and things like that. I had a question about that that popped into my mind. We keep hearing things from Tesla, like the virtual power plant, where your battery storage can act or can work with other homes 
and even send power back to the grid and things like that. And you can even get paid for it. And then there's this thing called auto bidder. And does, do you know anything about all that? Does that mean you have to have a power wall to make that all that happen? Or um, do you have to use Tesla solar panels, uh, you know, in order to use their software for this kind of thing? Or is it only a power wall that's needed? So I wonder if you could shed some light on that. And then also, I want to ask you a second question, maybe if I can, for you personally, for I'm going to be getting a new Model Y here pretty soon, the Quicksilver all-wheel uh, all drive. And I was wondering if you could just give me and our other listeners, what would be your top three must-have accessories for a car like that? Anyway, thank you. Love the show. Hey, Ryan. Well, I would be very happy to help you out as best I can here. First, to answer your question about the virtual power plant that Tesla has in some areas like California and Texas, I'm honestly not sure about Nevada. I tried to look it up on Tesla's website. I could not find a definitive answer about it. But anyway, Tesla's support page just says, quote, Depending on the program and area, eligible owners can sign up for Tesla VPP programs in the Tesla app or through a Tesla partner, such as a utility or certified installer, end quote. But I did confirm that all you need is a Tesla Powerwall. You do not need to have Tesla brand solar panels. Now, as to the top three accessories that I would recommend for a new Model Y, and let me add congratulations on that Quicksilver, by the way. Well, here you go. Here's my top three. Number one, all-weather floor mats. Uh, they're going to be easier to clean than the carpet. They look pretty nice, and they're just they're just kind of, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry if, if you got muddy shoes or anything. You just, you just jump in the car, and you can clean the all-weather mats later, so... I'm a big fan of those. As I've said before, I run all-weather mats in my Model 3 year-round. I had originally, when I got them, I would originally thought they would just be for the rainy season and I'd put the carpets back in in the summer, but I like them so much, I just leave them in all the time. Number two, the Snap Plate or the Snap Plate Plus that I mention at the end of the podcast every week. If you either want or legally need to have a front license plate on your car, and Google says that Nevada does require it by law, I do like the snap plate because it's it just goes on without tape, number one. The, the one that Tesla gives you sticks to the car with tape. So if you ever want to get it off, it's going to be a, a, a really bad situation. So I like the snap plate. Number three, if you can budget for it, paint protection film on at least the front of the car, meaning from the front up to the, the mirrors, all the way up the hood, installed by a professional, reputable detailer, you want to protect that beautiful Quicksilver paint because you got to remember that on a Tesla, there's no radiator in the front of the car. I mean, there is a, an air intake down low, but you know, there's there's not the traditional radiator, a grill, like a, like a gas-powered car has. So the entire front of the car is paint. And, well, where are the rock chips, debris? Where's all that stuff hit, mostly? The front of the car. So if you don't do the PT PPF, in time, you're eventually going to have little pock marks and ding, you know, little just rock chips and things. So if you can budget for it, PPF on at least that front of the car all the way up the hood to the mirrors. That's uh, definitely a recommendation. So congratulations on your upcoming delivery, Ryan. And if you if you think of it, send me a picture when you get the car. I'd love to, love to see it. Next up is Pete from Perth in Western Australia. Good day, Ryan. It's Pete Petrovsky from Perth, Western Australia. It was great to see that Tesla is now incorporating parental controls of what's also known as teenage mode with the 2024.26 update. However, I must say I'm a bit disappointed as I think this is a missed opportunity for guest mode. I'm referring to situations where you lend your car to someone else or you share it via a car sharing platform or you rent or hire it out or hopefully in the not too distant future you make it available via Tesla's own robo taxi network. Basically, anytime you let someone else drive your car, the current feature set is definitely not suitable for these situations, as there are numerous issues, privacy being just one of them. 
For example, when I lend my card to another person, they can not only see all my YouTube, Netflix and Disney Plus viewing history and my login email, but if I give them access via the app, they can see the service history and what you would think are private messages between the owner of the car and the service center. With the CyberCab unveil scheduled for later this year, you would think these type of issues would already be addressed. I know there are Tesla employees who listen to your show, so I'm hoping that one of them hears this and passes it on. Thanks, Ryan, and thank you for all your contributions to the Tesla community worldwide. Pete, first of all, thank you so much for your kind words. That really made my day. Uh, Second, I think you've hit on something good here. Tesla can and should take these new parental controls one step further to offer, as you suggest, a guest mode that maintains the owner's privacy on the software side of things. Why not? I mean, plus, if I may, it could also allow for speed limit restrictions and to disable track mode if that particular Tesla has it, which would have to be a performance mode, performance car. But yeah, let's put this out there with the hopes that the Tesla software team takes it into consideration. Thank you again, Pete. Appreciate your call. And I've got time for just one more call this week. It is from Brad. Ryan, you've been talking quite a bit about battery unlock options on the various vehicles. And I'm just wanting some illumination on exactly what a software lock is. Um, What we know is that the higher the state of charge, the slower the charge rate on our cars. So if you have a percent of your battery locked out, do you get to charge faster to a higher percent? Because in essence, you do have a larger battery pack and it's just not letting you use the range or those batteries physically not accessible. And so you would also get increased charging speed by unlocking those batteries. That would possibly be a factor that would move the needle in any decision making I would have. Great question here, Brad. And I need to caveat my response by saying I do not know this for certain, but I do believe that yes, you do charge faster to a higher available battery percentage with the software lock in place because those locked cells still need to be maintained and kept healthy, so the battery management system still has to account for them. Meaning that if you have a software locked Model Y battery, charging to your 80% should happen a bit more quickly than the entire battery's 80% state of charge if you were to unlock the full capacity of it. It should still be a relatively minimal time difference though, especially on a trip, because you're generally not going to supercharge to 90%, let alone higher than that. And 90% on up is where it really gets slow on a, uh, even on a supercharge. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your call. Thank you to everybody that kindly took the time to call in this week. If I didn't get to your call, I will do my best to get to it on next week's podcast. And if you'd like to call in, if you want to respond to something that I said earlier in the podcast or respond to the clip from Elon about FSD on Cybertruck, or you want to respond to another caller, feel free to call in. I gave you the two easy call-in methods at the top of this segment, so refer back to that. Well, I'm not done with this episode. I'm going to take a very short musical break right here, and I'm going to come back and tell you about the X Takeover. I'll have your pro tip of the week and more coming up next. I had a fantastic time last weekend at the X Takeover. My second time there. They were very kind to invite me down. I emceed the entire afternoon. I hosted a couple of panels, one with Russell Shepard from Michelin, who's been on this podcast before. They have a new EV tire that's available in 19 and 20 inch size for Model 3, and I believe it's 20 and 21 for Model Y, or is it 19 and 20? It's two sizes for each. Anyway, it's coming out in September, and it's going to be like their most efficient tire yet. So thankfully, knock on wood, I don't need tires anytime soon, although I do need to get mine rotated after that 
uh, drive down to San Luis Obispo. It's about three and a half hours each way. It was good. Thankfully, it was a nice, pleasant cruise both ways. But uh, anyway, so I hosted that. And then Kim Java, who is a, f- a friend of mine, her and her husband, PJ, I interviewed the two of them and one of their sons who uh, wants to get into YouTube content creation. I mean, he's already doing it, but he's. I wanted to get his perspective on EVs and how like kids think about EVs. So it was a pretty fun panel. Hopefully at some point, if they're not already online, they'll be online and I can direct you to, to watch them if you're interested in that, but had a fantastic time. There were so many cool cars down there. There were over 40 Cybertrucks, which is just wild when you think that at last year's X Takeover, there were zero Cybertrucks because it wasn't out yet. And at this one, there were over 40, even though the truck still isn't in general production. It's still Foundation Series only, obviously. So that was cool to see. Tesla had a Lunar Silver Model X there, which was great to see. There were Quicksilver Ys as well. There was oh, Carl Medlock, who has a roadster repair shop up in Seattle, brought one of the three barn find original roadsters, you know, the zero mile original roadster, the three of them that were found in the shipping containers. So he's he's restoring them. And so he had one of them there. It was in very orange. Yes, very orange is the actual name of the color. So that was a neat piece of Tesla history to get to see. Uh, I've got some, some of these pictures are on my Instagram if you're interested in seeing them. My Instagram username is DMC underscore Ryan. But uh, yeah, it was, Franz gave his uh, virtual keynote. It was great to hear from him. Of course, Elon, I wasn't there the second day. I had to get home because we had the new puppy. We had Mina, so I I had to get back. But uh, so it was a long day for me. I left the house at like 6.30 to drive down there and got home at 1 a.m., but it was such a fun day, well worth it. And the best part was the fantastically fun Ride the Lightning listener meetup that, again, I have to give a shout-out to Victoria Iacoveto and Tesla Hitchhiker 42. They put the whole thing together. They were such phenomenal hosts, and it was just so much fun. And... I, there was a pretty good turnout. Like I was humbled by the number of people that turned up for this that are listeners of this podcast. It was so cool to get to to meet a lot of you face to face. I mean, not a lot of you statistically because there are tens of thousands of you that listen, but it was so great to get to meet a number of you face to face. Everybody seemed to be, you know, I couldn't be everywhere with, at once. I tried to say hi to everybody. And But everybody seemed to be enjoying talking to each other, and it was just such a fun time, really humbling experience for me, and I, I was so grateful to get to meet a number of you, and just exceptionally grateful to Victoria and Tesla Hitchhiker 42, just such gracious hosts, hosting it in their hotel suite right there at the Madonna Inn, which is where the, the event was located. So um, I will have to do, I guess technically that was the third Ride the Lightning listener meetup I've ever done. The first one was probably, I wonder if it was 2018, the over over the Christmas New Year's holiday week, right after I got my Model 3 when I drove it down to Arizona, because it was it was in Arizona, just because I was gonna be there over the holidays. And we met we a bunch of us met up at an In N Out burger, and that was fun. That was a pretty good turnout too. And then the oh the second one was at the Peterson Auto Museum in LA that was in December a couple years ago i guess that would have been 2022 i think and that had a nice turnout as well so this was even bigger an even bigger turnout but i'm so grateful to everybody that that stopped by said hello and it was just wonderful so i had a great time I hope I I have the good fortune of being invited back to participate in the event next year. And if I'm not invited back, well, I'll probably just buy a ticket and come as a as a as a regular attendee. But I I had a great time being the MC for the afternoon on Saturday, and I had a great time hosting a couple of panels as well. Here is your Tesla Pro Tip of the Week. I'm going to preface this by saying I could use more Pro Tips of the Week. I haven't gotten any in a while. And I know I've played 
a, a lot of them over, I mean, how many hundreds of tips that I've played at this point? Because I do one every single episode. So there have been a lot out there, but if you've got one and you want to share it, please do. You can call in in either of the two call-in methods that I that I gave you the instructions for earlier. So keep those pro tips of the week coming. For now, here is a pro tip of the week from Tim in San Diego. Hey, Ryan. Tim here from San Diego calling with a pro tip. You've had a bunch of calls lately on how to deal with a phone key that stops working intermittently. What about a phone key that stops working completely when you can't lock on walk away, can't unlock on walk up, and can't drive without the key card on the center console, like in my case? The Tesla owner's manual and a few online sources try to provide steps to fix this, but I found one big missing step. Here's what they tell you to do. First, after going to controls, then locks on the dash screen, delete your phone as a key, then click on add key. Second, place the key card on the center console. Third, open the Tesla app and click on set up phone key from the main menu. Fourth, click on confirm on the dash screen. But wait, about that third step, set up phone key? What if set up phone key is nowhere to be found on the app's main menu or anywhere else in the app? Remember that missing step? You need to completely sign out of the app and then log back in, entering your username and password. Only then do you get the set up phone key option to appear in the app's main menu. Once it appears, you can click on it to reset your phone as a key. Just before clicking to confirm, you do get a warning that your data in the app won't be saved. When I went ahead with this process, however, I found that all of my service history, safety score, and charge stat data were still there. So my phone was reset as a key, and it looks like no data was lost. Hope this helps a few of your listeners out there. Take care, Ryan. Tim, thank you very much for that detailed set of instructions. I very much appreciate it. Great pro tip of the week. And again, if anybody else out there has got one, now is the time to send it in. Share it with me and your fellow Tesla owners and enthusiasts. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to share it. All right, before I get out of here, I know this has been maybe a slightly longer episode than usual, but I've got a few friends of the podcast to mention. I'll start with abstractocean.com. They sell a ton of great Tesla aftermarket accessories. Interior lighting is a specialty of theirs if you want brighter interior lighting, uh, if you want different color interior lighting, they can do any of that for you. The puddle lights for when you open your door and the light that shines down onto the ground, you can uh, easily replace that. It's a very quick and easy process and do like the Tesla T logo or the Model 3 or Model Y logo, that kind of stuff. They sell all kinds of neat stuff. You got to just go there and take a look. Abstractocean.com. Click on whichever Tesla you have at the, on the top nav bar, and it will show you all of the accessories available for your car. Certainly that fourth generation screen protector is one of their, mo their most popular ones. It has antimicrobial coating and it uses aluminosilicate glass, which is the same stuff that Corning glass uses for Gorilla Glass. So it's serious stuff. Check them out, abstractocean.com and you can get a 15% discount off of your first order by piling everything you like into your online shopping cart. And at checkout, use the coupon code RTLPODCAST. That's all one word, no spaces, RTLPODCAST for 15% off of your first order. I know I mentioned it a little earlier in the show, but real quick, I'll give a plug to the Snap Plate and the Snap Plate Plus available for S, X, 3, and Y. Get yours at everyamp.com slash RTL, and there's a discount code here as well. That code is RTL. So the website, everyamp.com slash RTL, the coupon code, RTL. This is the front license plate bracket that I recommend if you either want or legally need to have one on your car. Make those fix-it tickets go away for those of you who, like me, hate having to use a front license plate. It will go on and off quickly, but securely. 
if when it's on and it'll it won't leave any unsightly hardware behind if you choose to take it off such as if you're detailing the car you're taking it to a cars and coffee and you don't want it on there something like that but it is designed by former nuclear power plant engineers so it's serious stuff the snap plate and the stronger snap plate plus budget safe solar Dot com. That's a website that I do recommend you visit if you're considering solar for your home or business. Keep them on your list. You're, of course, going to check with Tesla Solar. You should probably check with several solar providers, see which one is going to offer the best price for you, the, the coverage that you're looking for, and hopefully Budget Safe Solar might end up being the one that wins out for you. It did for me. And I've been very happy with the results. BudgetSafeSolar.com now offers home battery storage as part of their offer. So, yes, you can get the new Tesla Powerwall, the Powerwall 3, as part of your solar installation. Use the referral code RTL if you do end up proceeding with an installation on your home or business roof. BudgetSafeSolar.com Immaculate Reflections, a phenomenally awesome professional car detailer. If you're in or going to be in the greater San Francisco Bay Area with your Tesla or another car that you care about, I highly recommend that you drop it off for a spa day at Immaculate Reflections. The website to go to if you want to learn more and get in touch is irdetailing.com. Maybe you want to do paint correction to do have uh, have Jeff the detailer there do the wet sanding and the whole f- magic process he uses on the paint finish to get all those swirls all those imperfections out and get your paint finish looking as good as possible when i was talking at the at the top of the show about this being my 6 year anniversary of owning my car this week and how i said i genuinely think it looks better than it did before yes my new wheels are part of that but Jeff at Immaculate Reflections is an equal or greater part of that because he got my paint finish looking literally better than when it came out of the factory with the paint correction. I also did the paint protection film. Maybe you want to do that on your car as well, protect from those rocks, etc. I also did the ceramic coating because I'd rather do that once every three to five or more years, because I'm now well past five years and my ceramic coating's still good. Uh, If you'd rather do that instead of waxing it twice a year. So ceramic coating, paint protection film, paint correction, any of that, some of it, all of it, irdetailing.com. When you reach out, mention that you're a Ride the Lightning listener and any service that you book, you'll get a nice little Ride the Lightning listener discount. Finally, my Patreon, which I did mention earlier, but I'll mention it again here real quick. Patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. That is the way that you can voluntarily support the podcast. If you'd like to give back to what I'm doing here at Ride the Lightning, that's the way to do it is Patreon. The support tiers start at just five bucks a month. And in return for five bucks a month, you will get early access to each week's podcast. If you feel like stepping up to that $10 per month tier, you'll not only get the $5, the, excuse me, the early access each week, which is the $5 perk, but you'll also get those weekly lightning round bonus mini episodes that I do exclusively for Patreon. The, as I said, the one this week about re-ranking all of the Tesla paint colors ever from my least favorite to my favorite, ended up being 30 minutes long this week. They're not usually that long, but uh, there's there's quite a bit of content there in those lightning rounds now that I've done 105 of them. So you'll get instant access to all of those as soon as you join that $10 per month tier. So And then the tiers go up higher as well, and the perks stack. All the information is at patreon.com slash Podcast. Patreon spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. You can follow me on X and or on Instagram. I have the same username on both. And that username is DMC underscore Ryan. 
You can email me anytime about any Tesla-related stuff. My email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. And before I go, I do want to say hello and thank you to the top-tier Patreon backers. I'll start this week with the grandfathered-in Plaid-level supporters. This tier is officially not offered anymore, but these very kind and generous folks continue to pledge at that tier, and as such, they continue to get all the perks and bonuses that they should get at that tier. So thank you so much to George Cassioppo, Logan Willis, Peter Chalet, Eric Randolph, Dory and Steve Guberman, the Tesla Owners Club of Taiwan, Ron Lee, Charlie Gillespie, Dennis Peake, Jeff Angwin, Chase Cabanillas, the Lydia Family, Aaron Altschul, Jared Brown, Jerome Strack, Jamie Dalton, Mike and Barbara from Louisville, Matt Nixon, the Tesla Owners Club of Wisconsin, Ish, not Elon Musk, Peter, and the Bear Boys of Colorado. Next up is the Maximum Plaid Group, and as I record here on Friday night, tomorrow is the August Patreon Zoom Hangout. Everybody at the Maximum Plaid tier or higher gets invited every month to that call, and we always have a great conversation. And then anyone that either joins the Patreon at any level or upgrades an existing pledge gets a one-time invite to that monthly call as a thank you for your, your either new or upgraded pledge. So I hope to see lots of you there tomorrow, including these folks, the Maximum Plaid backers, Jonathan Wales, Cameron Clark, Daniel Grummer, Seth Capello, Nick and Tony, the Galpin family, Ryan from New York City, Darren Nickel, Kaz Barnes, Brett Libano, Patrick Wisniewski, Gil Cabrera, Todd Badger, Joe Edgel, Kevin Yank, the Tesla Owners Club of San Joaquin Valley. Great seeing Joe at the X Takeover. He heads up that club. Michael Williams, Will Stedman, Justin Perez, Jeremy Harris, Chris Beach, Tom Mills, Corey O'Donnell, Aaron, John Cody, Joel Sapp, Paul Casarino, Richard Corley, Chris Osborne, KB, Adam Lavoy, contact1callcenter.com, Jason Chalukas, Travis Krenzel, Bruce Otterstein, Tom Behan, Josh Pennington, John from Cream Ridge, New Jersey, Dustin Hart, Michael Gallo, Derek Finley, Charles Clement, Rav, Adam Christie, Damon Klein, and Jeff Brown. Finally, the Roadster in Space tier backers, the extra generous folks who get a one-on-one -on -one call with me every month, in addition to the monthly group call, should they elect to take it. And it's always a pleasure to chat with these folks. Thank you so much to Pete White, Lyle Austin, Steve Radspinner, Fernando Cordero, Lawton from Chicago, Sean Neidig, Neil Weaver, Jackson Wallace, Rolf and Jennifer Evers, Howard Anthony Smith, Victoria Aya Cavetto, Tesla Hitchhiker 42, Carol Weston, Robert from Near Philly, Kristen Rumble, American Home Contractors, GetAmber.com, and Doug Carey. And that brings us to the end of Ride the Lightning, episode 470. So we have not had Mina this week. I don't know if I mentioned it last week when I introduced her, but we are co-raising her with the friends of ours that got us into Canine Companions in the first place. And so we've, we've decided to to share the responsibility. So we're doing one week on, one week off. We're just trading each week. So Mina, not here this week, but she will be here next week. I, I can't wait to see how much bigger she is after not seeing her for a week. But she's uh, she was already doing amazing. I told you about her last week. So I'm sure I'll have a Mina update on next week's podcast. But for now, my snoozing... Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it. I must have. Daisy is seven now. She had a birthday. Well, it was while I was in Denver, while I was away a couple weeks ago. Daisy is now seven. And if you've been listening to the podcast long enough that you remember when I got Daisy, you remember when Maggie died. It's I can't believe Daisy is seven already. She's doing great. She is, as far as I know, in really good health. Her heart's doing great. Uh, I actually have to take her in pretty soon. She's just due for some vaccines, but 
Um, yeah, she's doing great, which I'm so, so grateful for. And thank you all for following along with my dog journeys, both, <laughs> both with my personal pet and with canine companions. So for the aforementioned snoozing Daisy the Boxer, my name is Ryan McCaffrey. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your week to share in this enthusiasm with me. We, we're all here with a shared interest, a shared enthusiasm for these cars, for this company, what this company is doing, and it's just a lot of fun. I have so much fun doing this podcast. I appreciate you listening to it. Those of you that are kind enough to contribute on Patreon, thank you so much because you do make a positive difference in my life and my family's life. It is not taken for granted. Happy electric motoring, my friends, and I'll see you back here next week. Elon Musk, people don't like Elon Musk. The guy founded PayPal and Tesla, and people are like, yeah, but he's a troll and a bad dad. I'm like, so was mine. He did nothing to fight climate change. <laughs> also, have you been in a Tesla? Have you been in a Tesla? My buddy let me drive his Tesla. I laughed out loud at how fast it went. Been clinically depressed my entire life on dozens of medications in a Tesla for 13 seconds, cured forever. <laughs> I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. That's what it's meant to be. Our goal is to make... It's, it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. It's maximum fun.